I thought I, we want to start with a little bit of the GM survey that came out yesterday. Of course, all 30 GMs were queried on a bunch of different questions uh, by NBA.com. It's really a nice primer going into the season. An overwhelming amount of general managers selected the Boston Celtics to repeat as NBA champions. Ice, we haven't had a repeat champion since the Kevin Durant Golden State Warriors. And I say Kevin Durant mm. Golden State Warriors because it was a different sort of years, sort of years yeah. when Kevin Durant was roaming the earth over there. Nothing against Stephen Curry, but those were a different level of supernova type of teams. 83% of the GMs selected the Celtics. Are you surprised? Because I'm a little bit surprised given how long it's been since we had a repeat champion, but are you shocked mm. that the Celtics are overwhelmingly the favorites? I don't think I would say I'm shocked. I think um, with how they won the championship last year and who they have returning, the GMs are looking at rosters, they're looking at what exists, and I, I don't think it's surprising. 83% is pretty high. Like 70 maybe would have been probably what I would have expected. But I, I'm definitely not shocked. I feel like they are in the the best position to repeat uh, if there was going to be a team that's done that. It's one of those weird things where they roll through the regular season, of course, with the 64 wins. They roll through the playoffs. They were pretty much untested the entire yeah. way and yet and still we still have some questions but because they are the champions they're going to get that respect plus y'all they have this extra rocket fuel that they have in their back pocket right you have Jalen Brown who is, was not an Olympian and it was a big stink about him not being an Olympian then you have Jason Tatum who was an Olympian and they were like hey we kind of have Kevin Durant and LeBron James, who might be two of the top 12 players of all time, who happen to play your position. You're just not going to play much here. And you could tell that it really affected them. Now, Ice, take me into the mind of someone like Jason Tatum here, because, of course, you are a former ball player. Yeah. Is that something that fuels a guy? Like, I think Jason Tatum versus mm -hmm. the Golden State Warriors when he sees Steve Kerr. I think it's going to be some smoke in the city. I think he's going to try to get him a 50 ball. And I think that game is really, really early in the season in Boston, maybe like November 5th or 6th or something like that. I might try to be there. But is that a media creation or do you think Jason Tatum really has this extra motivation? Nah, I think you take that personally. I think as a Hooper, anytime that you're on a team, put on a roster, even if it is the best in the world, you still take you know, uh, it personal when you don't play and when you don't get on the court. And again, this is a Jason Tatum that was coming off of winning a championship, right? And so it's like, you were on the best team. You're one of the best players. The other finals MVP and best player isn't here. You are here and you're not playing. Now you mentioned though, the players that he's sitting for, right? KD, LeBron. And then we saw the games in which KD and LeBron had to win games, right? And Steph, obviously. Um, and so I, I think, yes, as a player, you take it personal. I think especially when you go up against Steve Kerr, no matter if you agree, disagree, you have all the respect in the world, I think you take it personal and you want to give them a 50 ball. Um, but I also think you know, you mentioned this to me when we were talking before this, like this was Jason Tatum's second Olympic round, right? This was the second time that he could go for a gold medal. And so... It also maybe holds a little bit more weight, you know, that you were there before, you've played, you've won, and then this time around, we don't see you, especially after you just won a championship where you should be at the best of your game now. I'm taking it personal. I think he is too. I think it makes for great drama. Like, I think that mm. is the thing that and we, we love drama. We do. We do. And some people are better equipped to handle it than others. Let's be perfectly honest here. Some leagues are better equipped at handling drama <laughs> than others. And we'll get, we'll get to that or not get to that. But I'll give it to Jason Tatum because he sat up on media day and he answered all those questions about not being on the Olympic team. Like, I know people on that Olympic team, on the staff that were around that team. And Jason Tatum was telling me, hey, I'm the best player here. And I'm like, Arr? like, <laughs> I mean, you were the best player on the best NBA team that won a championship, but you are not the best player on this here team, but you got to have that level of confidence and it's Absolutely. going to make for an interesting, interesting regular season where champions usually have early malaises. They're usually trying to pace themselves to get through the 82 game marathon and then to prepare themselves for possibly 25 playoff games. 
now you're going to have a little bit more natural motivation to compete on a nightly basis to show not just the Golden State Warriors and Steve Kerr, but the entire world that you are that dude. And it's funny because in part of this survey, of course, there was some obvious things like Victor Wimbenyama is going to be selected as like the best international defender or the best uh, most versatile defender. Stephen Curry's the best shooter and everything else. But it was two things I want to hit on with you, Ice. In light of Jason Tatum, he was selected as the best small forward in the league over LeBron and over Kevin Durant. Now, that could be a function of people viewing LeBron and KD as maybe three fours, four threes, as opposed to pure small forwards. But if they, in fact, view all three guys playing the same position, I think that's pretty telling. Yeah, I, I agree. Again, this is the GMs, right? So we have to keep in mind like who who these votes are coming from. Um, but again, like being in the mindset of a player, you try not to fall into, you know, preseason picks or preseason rankings. Like I did A10 Media Day the other day, and you know, there's a team that's ranked number nine, but yet last year they were eight and then they ended up winning the whole thing. Like these preseason things, what do they mean? Who really knows? But I think Um, the acknowledgement for Jason Tatum is huge. I think the acknowledgement from the league and the GMs is huge. Uh, But at the same time, I just feel like he needs to show it. You know, it doesn't mean anything unless you take all of this personal and game in and game out. You're showing us that we were wrong, right? And I don't know who he is because I didn't, I saw so many people. I can't believe we're even having this discussion. It's October. We should be talking about other different things related to (laughs) basketball, but here we are. Like there were so many people who were up in arms and I'm like, well, who's Jason Tatum going to take minutes from at this stage? And you said it yourself. There were games where LeBron put the team on his back. There were games that when Kevin Durant came back from his injury, where you could see that he was the most vital player on the floor, if not the best player on the floor. And of course, Stephen Curry, you know, closing down that stadium in the final game in a compelling fashion. Granted, they don't play the same position, but those three producing such compelling moments and Jason Tatum being in the Christian Leitner, uh, Tyrese Halliburton role of, hey, I'm I'm, I'm the clapper. You know what I mean? Hey, sometimes you just got to be the clapper. But yeah, it it is going to produce some very interesting theater throughout the regular season. The other thing I wanted to hit on with you, Ice, Shea Gilgis-Alexander being (laughs) selected as preseason MVP Do you think, uh, granted, it's hard to get in the minds of these GMs if they indeed take this seriously, and I I tend to think they do because it it looks like they take it seriously and not just handing it off to some minion in in the office. Is that a function of, A, we think Oklahoma City is just going to be that good as a regular season team, and Shea Gilgis Alexander is that excellent of a player with the numbers that he's put up, like put up MVP numbers last year, of course, finishing the top three of voting, or is it this... Mm -hmm. We're not sure you want to give Nikola Jokic a fourth MVP when we're not sure how great his team is. Oh, you know, I'm a believer that it can be a little bit of both. Mm-hmm. Uh, most most don't like that answer because like, oh, you're copying out. You're not picking one or the other because I just think it could be a little bit of both. Um, one, you know, the way that Shea has played, like you said, over the last two years, averaging 30 points per game, all NBA first team selection. You mentioned he had gotten MVP votes. And with what the Thunder return and what they have and what they acquired, yes, they are championship contenders. And so I think it's definitely a bit of the best team and the best player. I also just personally love that it's a guard. Anytime these wards go to guards, I'm always like, thank you. Thank you so much. We do so much work and we just talk about post players all day. Sorry, that was just my personal rant. No, anyway. no, 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 no. You, <laughs> look, you, you're you're letting your, your guard flag fr- fly. You know what I mean? Like, I totally yes. get that, right? Right. NBA and WNBA. It's all about the post players. All the post players get all these awards. So, one, I'm just happy that SGA is there, that they're, you know, giving this notoriety to him. I do think on the other side, though, a a fourth MVP for Jokic, that is high praise. I mean, you can tell us some of the players who have who have gotten four, who have gotten three. That list is some of the best players we have ever seen play the game. Very, very high praise uh, if they were to do that. And so I think it's a little bit of both. Yeah, look, I'm going to run down the names for people who like Jokic is already in rarefied air. And If I'm just going post-merger, this is where Vinny goes full nerd sometimes. Post-merger, and the media started voting for MVP, I believe, in 1981. So the number, so the players that I'm going to name to you, 
have won three MVPs in the last 44, 45 years, if my memory serves. And John, you can even pipe in and correct me if you wind up looking this up. But here's who I think are the names of the players who've won three, just three, not even four, but just three, right? Magic Johnson, Larry Bird, they both won three. Michael Jordan won five. LeBron has won four. Jokic has won three. Not, we're not talking about Tim Duncan who only won two. We're not talking about Shaq who only won one. Kobe who only, who only won one. Steph Curry has won two. Kevin Durant has won one. I don't think there is another player. I think Kareem won most of his in the 70s before the media started voting. I think Moses Malone won back to back in 82 and 83, if memory serves. But you're talking about a very rare fighter of guys who've even won three, let alone going into, like I said, Michael, who's won five, LeBron, who's won four. And those guys have multiple NBA championships to their name. I think, I tend to think, it's less an indictment of how valuable Jokic is and how great Jokic is because he's probably still the best player on earth, right? I don't think anybody's going to look at Shea Gilgis Alexander and say he's the best player on earth. But I do think from the standpoint of, A, how the media votes and the tone of how the media votes. And we're looking at it and we're saying, is Denver still a championship team? Mm. We saw them go out in the second round at the crib in a game seven to the Pups. To the Minnesota Timber Pups, a team that was, let's be honest, they were built to beat them, right? When you go get Rudy Gobert and you pair him with Carl Towns and and you get all those long, rangy wings, that's what you're saying. You're saying we're going after you guys. And plus, championship fatigue, those guys were tired. Jamal Murray went out and said, hey, man, it's a lot harder being the hunted than it is being the hunters. Like, they didn't have the emotional and physical stamina to get there. And plus, you don't know if teams are going to repeat. You don't know if teams are going to show back up anymore. And you're not sure if the media is going to give Nikola Jokic, for all of his statistical glory, a fourth MVP because you're not sure how good or great the Nuggets will be. And that's an interesting place for that franchise with the best player on earth to be. Couldn't have said it better myself, honestly. An interesting place for that franchise to be. 